Welcome back to The Band Guide. I'm your band guy, Colin, and today I want to share with you my approach for tuning vocals to sound tight and natural inside Logic using built-in Logic tools. Now, this is something you could do in GarageBand or Pro Tools, but you might need some additional plugins like Waves Tune or Melodyne or tools like that. Today, we're going to be using the built-in tools inside Logic for this video. Now, this is a video about my approach to tuning vocals to sound tight and natural, and less about like the technicalities of how to use these tools. If you want me to do an in-depth video on flex pitch or something like that, let me know in the comments below. But today we're focusing on the approach to get a very tight, natural sound across your entire song. So a little bit less specific, a little bit broader in a way that I think will be really actionable for you. So this approach that I'm sharing with you in today's video, I'm working on a new song with my band Broke Royals, and I realized as I was going through it, oh, I've kind of stumbled into this approach over several years of recording and mixing music and probably hundreds of songs, and realized that this is not an approach I was ever specifically taught to something kind of figured out over time. So I want to share it with you because I think it's really helpful and it's a clear-cut way to think about and approach vocal tuning if you want it to sound natural in your song. So there's three goals with this approach. The first is that it needs to sound good, obviously. The second is that I want it to sound natural, at least for the songs I'm working on here. Today, it's not something that like an auto-tune T-Pain effect would work well on. So I need it to sound like there is no tuning on the vocals necessarily. And the third is that it needs to be as quick as possible. Full disclosure, this isn't a super fast approach to vocal tuning, but it's the fastest that I've been able to come up with that reaches my standards for what I expect from vocal tuning. Okay, and then the second thing that we need to be thinking about is what I consider the three layers of vocal tuning. So we have our lead vocals, we have our doubles and or like lead prominent harmonies, and then we have our backing vocals. So those are the three layers. And then finally, the tools that we're gonna be using across all those different vocals. In my case, we're gonna be talking about flex pitch and the built-in pitch correction plugin, which is kind of like auto-tune inside Logic. Okay, let's get straight into it, starting with lead vocals. So we have our lead vocals here. Let's just listen to a little bit of the song so we have a sense of what we're working with. Now, keep in mind that this song is not mixed at all yet. I'm still just getting it all ready. So I'm tuning my vocals and then I'll start clearing things out and getting ready to mix it. So these are just raw tracks at this point. Let's check it out. Okay, so here what we have is we have a prominent lead vocal and then we have a left and right double that are fairly prominently featured. Again, this isn't mixed yet, but just to get a sense of, I, that's how we intend for these vocal tracks to be used. Now, when you're focusing on your lead vocal, you want to focus on just the tuning of your lead vocal, making sure that it stands on its own, that there's no like weirdness to it that you're just trying to cover up by mixing other things in. So what I like to do is just start by muting my other vocals and focusing on just that lead vocal in the context of the song. And then I hit E to bring up my editor window, and you just need to turn on flex pitch here to see flex pitch. It will take a second to analyze it, but then you'll see all of the notes of your performance, and you can just go through and see exactly what was sung here. So now I can look at this. Turn up the volume a little bit, maybe. Where were you when I was all distractions? So bored, it was all abstractions. It's not true, but I was getting... Right, and I can look through the actual notes that are being sung. Now... Flex pitch takes a little bit longer to do because if I want to adjust a note here, I have to literally go in and manually do it. You can select notes and just bring the strength up uh, on the scale, the pitch correction up to 100. I typically don't like to do that because uh, that's when you can start to pull it into areas that can seem unnatural. So I prefer personally to just go through and do it manually and make sure that I'm only tuning things that need to be tuned. So what I would do is get this pulled up and then I would listen through and find if there's anything that's just a little bit wonky in the performance. Where were you when I was stuck in the basement? Now, I've already tuned this, but there are a couple little things in here that still bother me just a little bit. So, for example, right here, that four, I think he gets just a little bit too low right there. So, what I would do is just grab that note. If you double click on it, it will pull it up to, you see over here, 100% pitch correction. So, that means that it's going to take the center of this note and put it up to the nearest note in the key if you set the key right here. So, that's a starting point there. Now, once I've done it, I need to listen to it, make sure I actually like it. Do I like what that just did? So without that, if I hit Command Z to undo it, for my own and I redo it, for my own 
Okay, so technically I think it's a little bit more right, but I actually think there's something that gets lost a little bit by having it perfectly on that note. And this is the key to making it sound natural is that sometimes those imperfections are what you're actually looking for. So I'm actually going to undo it and then maybe bring it up just a little bit. So with flex pitch, we have these six little dots around here. The top middle one is one that just allows us to bring it up just a little bit. Let's listen to that now. Looking for my own replacement. A little bit better, right? When I was all distractions. That all, was all he just gets a little bit high on that note. So I'm actually going to bring that one down just a little bit. When I was all distractions. Or should he be on this note, actually? When I was all Definitely not, right? And this actually leads me to my second point, which is, did you hear on natural that sounded? And part of it is I was pulling it to the wrong note. But part of that too is that if you go too far away from where it was originally sung, it's going to sound unnatural. And this is one of my biggest tips for you. That's that your performance has to be relatively close to the note that is intended to be sung. So sometimes this will mean that you actually have to go back and re-record the vocals for that section, which is really frustrating, but it's one of the biggest strengths of doing your own vocal tune is that you can learn where your performances are a little bit off and you can tighten those up. And over time, you will likely be using less and less vocal tuning because you'll understand where it is that you need to be hitting these notes or where you're maybe getting a little bit sharp, or a little bit flat. So one thing you could do is do a whole vocal take, tune it, and then you can see where you're falling high or low on notes and then re-sing it right off the bat and really focus more on character and emotion, right? That's another way you could approach it. Okay, and one more tip when it comes to tuning your lead vocals and using flex pitch in general is that these lines are going to be wavy. Don't be freaked out by that and don't try to make everything a straight line. That's when you're gonna start getting that unnatural T-Pain auto-tune effect. What you need to do is focus on just little section and make sure that the key part of the note is hitting where it should. And so if we listen to a little bit more of this here, so bored, it was all where he says bored, this last little bit of this note, I want to bring up just a little bit. Now, you can see here that he actually is falling from there onto this note, and I can pull it up, and now we can listen to that. So bored, it was all abstraction. Cool, right? That puts us right on the note that we're supposed to be, but sometimes it's not going to split up the note where you want it to. So let's look for an example of that really quickly. So let's say this note right here, this note falls down, and what we might need to do is actually cut off the first part of that note so that the note where that fall is happening isn't impacting the note where it lands. And so what I do is I just set my second tool up here to scissors, and then I can hold command and click right there, and it's just gonna split it off into two different sections. And then I can tune this note, but not mess with the fall, right? Subtle, but that little bit of subtlety can make a big difference in making it sound more natural. Okay, so that's the way I would approach the lead vocal. I'd listen to it by itself in the context of the song and just listen for little things that jump out to me and just try to tighten it up a little bit here and there. And then it's time for the second layer of vocals, which is our vocal doubles or main harmonies. So vocal doubles, if you don't know, are when you're just singing the exact same thing again. So for example, here we have our lead vocals, but then we also have left and right doubles. So if we listen to that in solo here. Where were you when I was stuck in the basement? Looking for my own replacement singing the exact same thing, right? Trying to get tight in tone and performance as much as we can. So that's a double. A harmony would be if you're singing something different. So for example, in this chorus, it switches from doing a double to actually doing a harmony of the main Kiss chorus. Kiss my neck, I fall apart again. Right, now with the doubles, our main goal is making sure that it works with the lead vocal. So what I like to do is take one double at a time. I take them in solo initially, and I put them both up the middle, and then I just listen for any Anything that catches my ear. I still recommend using flex pitch for this as opposed to a pitch correction plugin because you want to be really accurate here and make sure that it's really doing what the lead vocal is doing as much as tight as you want it to be. So what I would do is listen to these with both of them up the center initially like this. Where were you when I was stuck in the basement? Looking for my own replacement. Where were you? And I just listen for anything that catches my ear. And again, I'm not necessarily tuning everything. I'm just tuning the things that sound or feel off to me. And I'm going into where that happens. Sometimes it's not actually a note. Sometimes it actually has to do more with timing. And what's cool with flex pitch is that you can actually mess with the timing too. So for example, here in this first line, if I turn flex pitch off on the double, we can hear it without the flex pitch. And notice how the timing is just a little 
little bit wonky. The pitch is a little bit wonky too, but the timing is really off. Where were you when I was stuck in the basement? You can even see it here. This basement when he, he hits the B is much later on the lead vocal than it is on the double. So I want to really tighten that up on my double. And so if I turn flex pitch back on here, we can see now that that line is a lot more lined up. And now when we listen to that. Where were you when I was stuck in the basement? And to do that, all you have to do is find the line, line up your main cursor with the line on your lead vocal, and then just make sure that where this note is hitting, you can just drag it forward or back. We're actually on the lead vocal here. Let's go back to the double. Just drag this forward or back and get it where it's really working right for that line. Okay, so once I have done my main double and got it really situated the way that I want it to, then what I do is I go through any other doubles that I have. It's pretty common for me to have a left, a right, and a center double. And what I'll do is I'll just go through them one by one once I have one double figured out where it's really, really tight, and I will listen to it in solo with the next double. So I would take both of these doubles here, Put them both up the middle, and now listen to these. Where were you when I was stuck in the basement, looking for my And I just want to, again, find anything that's just a little bit off and tune it and make sure the timing is really tight as well. And then, once I've done it in mono up the middle, I will take them and pan them far left and right and listen to them one more time and see if anything else jumps Where out at me. You when I was stuck in the basement? So that's the way I approach vocal doubles and harmonies. I listen first to one with the lead vocal both up the center and just correct anything that's a little bit off. And then I listen to another double against that first double up the center. And then I pan them out left and right and listen and see if anything grabs my ear. And at that point, I'll listen to it one final time with the lead vocal and I'll do any final adjustments. And that's going to give me a really, really clean, tight, natural sounding vocal tuning and timing across all of my predominant vocals, my lead vocals, my doubles, and my harmonies. Now, you might be thinking, okay, that is a lot of work for my vocals. This is why I think we need to break out our vocals into the three layers. We have our lead vocals, we have any doubles and prominent harmonies, main harmonies, and then we have our backing vocals. And my approach for the backing vocals is a little bit different. So let's go and talk about that third layer of vocals, the backing vocals. Backing vocals are inherently backing vocals, right? They're meant to be tucked back a little bit more than your predominant sources, your lead vocal and your primary doubles or harmonies. Your backing vocals are going to sit a little bit lower in the mix, but that doesn't mean they're not an important part of the mix. And those being a little bit too off, they can be a little bit off, but a little bit too off can throw off your mix and really make your song just not sound professional, not sound good. And so with backing vocals, for example, here I have three kind of lead or predominant sources, and then I have all of these backing vocals that go together to add this really big part to this chorus. If we listen to those here in the context of the mix, and then I will mute them, muting all the backing vocals at once. Check this out. So again, this isn't a mix yet, but the role that they're gonna play is gonna be similar to that. They're going to really fill out that chorus and make it feel huge and anthemic, even more so when it's mixed. So you need your vocals to be tight to some extent, but you don't wanna go through every single one of these vocals and manually tune them with flex pitch if you don't have to. So what I recommend doing is using a plugin like the built-in pitch correction plugin in Logic. This comes with Logic. This is very similar to uh, just like auto-tune or wave tune. Uh, one of the ones that are just giving you basically the key of the song is just going to keep it in the key of the song and you just have a few parameters you can adjust. So for example, this is our vocal here. I'm going to put it up the center for a second. Bring up the volume. Now the key to having this sound natural with a plugin like this where you don't have as much control is to make sure that the response time is not too fast. If we go really fast, this is when you're going to get into, you know, T-Pain territory. And also if you want that effect, this is how you do that, right? So you want to keep your response time fairly slow. You don't want to go all the way slow because a lot of times it's going to miss a fair amount of notes because uh, it doesn't get the transitions. But somewhere kind of medium to in the faster range is where you're gonna get a natural but still accurate tuning from this plugin. The key to this too is that you set your scale. Otherwise, it's gonna pull it just to whatever the nearest note is, and sometimes that's not gonna be in the key of your song. So I like to try to pull this towards and just see if I can get a little bit tighter. Now, another key when you're laying a bunch of these together to avoid kind of losing 
using the separation of all the different vocals singing is to play around with the detuning. So detuning is just gonna actually intentionally put it just a little bit off from the perfect note, but not massively. So you have your center note. This is just gonna move it since off of that note just a little bit, which is gonna make it feel a little bit more natural. Very rarely is someone singing the perfect on tune pitch. So we're gonna get it really close to it with tuning, but we are gonna have a little bit of variability. And when using a plugin like this, by adjusting your detuning across multiple tracks can really help you just have a little bit more natural of a feel. So if we pull up all of our backing vocals here, all of them have this pitch correction on it now, and we'll look, this one I'm going up five cents. So I just drag the slider up just a little bit. This one I'm going over here, I'm going at zero. So I'm not adjusting it at all. On this one, I am coming down one cent. So I'm just playing with it just a little bit. You don't want to go crazy and like really mess with it, but just bringing it down a little bit or up a little bit can give you a much more natural feel to the track, right? Okay, so the last note about using pitch correction plugins like this on backing vocals or wherever you decide to use them is that they are dumb. They don't know anything other than that it's going to pull it to the closest next note, which is why you need to set your key. But even once you set your key, you could still have it where your next note, you were actually a little bit too sharp and it pulls it up to the next note as opposed to going down to the note that you're really trying to hit, right? And so let's, I have a good example of this actually. Let's listen to this here. So if we listen to these two vocals here, they're supposed to be doing the same thing, but listen to how they get a little bit clashy. Kiss my neck, I fall apart again, like. You hear it on that again? Again, like, again, like, again, like. Right, there's just a little bit off. Even though we pitch correction on both of them, what is happening is that he went a little bit too sharp, so it pulled it up to the next note as opposed to pulling it down to the note that he meant to be hitting. So if we pull up E to bring up our editor window, what I do is I just use flex pitch in conjunction with this pitch correction plugin. It's a lot faster than doing all manual flex pitch, but now I can just fix little notes if they jump out to me. So I don't put this on every single track. I only do it if I hear a specific problem. So I always spend just a little bit of time once I've pulled up my pitch correction, listening through the vocals in solo, making sure that there's nothing really wonky happening here. So let's find this section right here and listen to that note. Kiss my neck, I fall apart again, like. So we can hear right here, this note, this again. So he should be down here, but he accidentally hit closer to this note and it's pointed up to that note with the pitch correction. So we wanna have it down here. And now, when we listen to it with the doubled vocal, it's a lot better, right? Okay, so even when you're using pitch correction, that doesn't mean you can't use flex pitch to just try to tighten it up a little bit. Sometimes that's the best thing you can do. And I still don't have to go through and manually tune every one of these vocals, but I can just hit a note here or there on individual tracks to make sure that the vocals are always hitting the notes that they should be. Okay, I hope that's helpful. So that's my workflow. I think about it through the lead vocal and then my doubles or harmonies and then my backing vocals. And I really basically put the amount of time and attention into it in that progressive order. So the most most time and attention on my lead vocal, the second most time and attention on my doubles and harmonies, and then the third and least on the backing vocals. That's where I'm saving as much time as I can, making sure that they're as close as they need to be. Nothing's ever really wrong, but I'm not spending an hour going through and manually tuning the entire vocal track by track by track it can be really time consuming. So I hope this is helpful. Before you go, I wanna give you something. If you're struggling to get your music to sound professional, it's likely the mix that's really holding it back. Mixing is a huge part of the process. You could have the best recorded tracks in the world, but without a mix, they aren't gonna sound up to the commercial standards. They're never gonna sound professional. They're never gonna showcase the song as well as it could if you mix that song. And the reality is that there's only six steps that all professional mixes have, and I put together something to help you with that. I put together a six step checklist that just walks through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do them inside Logic or GarageBand or wherever it is you're making music. It's completely free from the link in the description below, so be sure to pick it up. Before we go, I'd love to hear from you. How have you approached tuning vocals in the past? Is there anything from this video that you're going to try on your next song? Let me know in the comments below. And by the way, if you're liking this song, the little snippets that you've heard, we're going to be releasing the song at some point coming up here in the future, and there's a link below where you can sign up to be the first to hear about that as well. If this video is helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video. One thing